happiness in the year. <clears throat> it's very fitting that um, this would be the next Uranus video, considering I just did Uranus in Aquarius, which was the late 90s, and this transit, which was basically about 1955 to 1962, um, they're, they're partner signs, partner placements actually, being Leo and Aquarius being partner signs, and uh, yeah, so you guys have a lot to, to learn from each other and a lot to offer. Definitely. Before we get into your guys' energies and your specific manifestation, um, I really encourage you to, to help in any way that you can. Those, I mean, everyone of course, yes, that's Leo's generosity, but especially those of uh, Uranus and Aquarius, because they can really learn from you, and vice versa, really. I think both of you guys will find an incredible bond that is just so special that you can't quite put your finger on, but you find that when you unite you with Uranus and Leo, with somebody with Uranus and Aquarius, um, you know, when you have a conversation, amazing, amazing healing will happen for both of you, and you both will learn so much. Um, Uranus and Leo is a tough energy, it really is, and I've it, it has its really beautiful size, just like every energy. You know, every energy has its challenges, and every energy has its beautiful gifts to offer the world. But I've definitely been on the receiving end of um, of uh, the, the lower order, well, and as well as the higher order of this energy. Um, hmm, which, where to begin? I think it's really good to preface this with a little insight that I was so happy to have, have gained from um, a family friend of mine who was actually born in this time. I was talking to her about this generation and how it seemed there's certain characteristics that belongs to, to I found with Uranus and, and Leo and she made an amazing amazing insight that has stuck with me. Um, it's been a couple, it's been a long time since actually that conversation happened but Basically, those with Uranus and Leo, those born in those years, pretty much, I mean, for the vast, vast majority, I can't imagine who would be free of this, except unless you were born in other parts of the world, but for the vast, vast majority, um, they were born of people, of, of mothers and fathers who went through World War II. And dear God, I mean, you can imagine how that kind of violence and, and chaos, and let alone the actual fighting, but the fear that everyone experienced, you know, uh, at home also, if not especially at home, um, that kind of fear of, of takeover, you know, of Nazi takeover and, and imperialistic fascist takeover, that coupled with the intense violence and killing and just senseless slaughter, it, it makes sense at why and how that would influence their children. And it's fascinating that Leo, the sign of the father, uh, is at play here with those born in, the, in that time. And it's very interesting also that, and I've, I've noticed it in those who have Uranus and Cancer, the sign preceding Uranus and Leo, how when they were growing up, they also had, you know, their, their mothers very often uh, exhibited some really challenging behaviors. Beautiful behaviors, yes, definitely. There is some... You know, there's always a silver lining. That's, I'll save that for the Uranus and Cancer video. But there's definitely, especially with Uranus and Leo, which is known as a challenging energy, um, I've seen a lot of really, really challenging childhoods, and especially in relation to their fathers, for those born during this time. So I really invite you to, at your own pace, investigate that, and and find peace in that, because I, I've, it's very sad. Uh, to see that kind of pain passed on and not resolved in those who have this energy and who are now, you know, uh, early 50s, um, late 50s, I suppose, too. It, it's, there's a lot of pain there that has got to be healed because it, it's just so devastating when it's not. And the really challenging aspects of this come about. And also I find um, when it's not, when those childhood, 
memories of such intense energies, especially regarding their father, and such violence often. Um, when they're not resolved, there's a lot of, fascinatingly enough, uh, also very tragically enough, there's a lot of heart issues. I mean, you could say figuratively, as per expressing emotions, and sensitivity, which no doubt was, was dulled by their, by their fathers, uh, who fought in such horrendous scenarios, and who just fought to survive. Uh, but there's a lot of oh, heart failure too. A lot of people of this generation have a lot of heart issues. And, you know, attitude and positive thinking and, and healing yourself and healing wounds is absolutely linked with health. Our minds and our emotions are absolutely as important to our health as our bodies are. And, um, you know, science is just now starting to produce more and more uh, studies about this, but it's, it's, just, it's just logical, you know, of course. If you're having horrible thoughts and horrible uh, feelings course through you, you're not going to be a healthy person. You're not going to be a happy person. And um, happiness and health are, are absolutely linked, absolutely. So, now that we've covered that, let's, let's look at this energy. I think the best thing about this energy, the, the thing I prize the most, and um, considering I've had, I've had four uh, familiar figure, familial figures in my life, uh, my mom, my stepdad, my dad, and my stepmom, and um, you know, three of them have this energy, and I've definitely seen it in a lot of interesting manifestations. Uranus and Leo, even though it's a challenging energy, like I, like I always say, every energy has its beautiful gift as well to offer, its challenges. And the beautiful gift for, for this energy, I find, is the eccentricity, is the, the love of being so original in yourself that you don't give a fuck what anyone else says. And I really do find that that has to do with the, the childhood brought up. Uh, too, that very often the, the childhood is very unhappy and very strict and very just, just loaded with neuroses gained from the war. And, um, and you know, the Korean War after that, and then it was not a very pretty time in human history, to say the least. Um, but in being raised in that environment, it's been really cool and reassuring to see, refreshing to see individuals who were raised in that environment and then with this energy um, don't load up themselves with the psychological sadnesses and, and just blocks, uh, emotional blocks that, that their childhood was loaded with their parents. They go the other way and they just say, yeah, fuck that, I'm going to go do my own thing, I'm going to live my own life, I'm going to be myself and I'm going to just, I'm, it's all me, I'm going to be myself. And that is the best part of this energy, the most inspiring part of this energy. And uh, it's a gift. It really is a gift, you know. I, I really, I, I, don't, I don't want you to feel bad about having this energy after saying all the stuff I was saying before. It's really important to view everything from a karmic point of view. And um, especially in relation to our parents. Very much the most karmic people I find, uh, in my case and everyone else around me, including my parents, uh, our parents who we, who were born to in this life who we incarnate with so intimately. We have tons of karma to clean up with them. And very often I find, we kill somebody in one life and in the next life they're our mom, you know, or they're our kid. And we have to deal with that. And there are some challenging, challenging fucking emotions in that. Um, but once you get past it, once you live through it and you survive, you're, you're free of it. As long as you don't promote that, that negativity, you know, as long as you do your best to to forgive, you don't have to forget, but do your best to forgive the, the heartache that was caused to you at such a young age. And try and see it from a bigger perspective. Okay, it's done. I don't ever have to live through that again. I'm not gonna reincarnate in the same circumstances. It's, that's impossible in the first place, but I, I lived through all that shit. It's done, it's cleaned up. Okay, okay. That really helps, I find with this energy, with all energies really, because we all have our challenges, definitely. But especially with this energy that seems to, I mean, you know, the next 2000 years is the Aquarian age and Uranus is the planet of the Aquarian age. 
and it very much influences our life, um, influences us and our lives in such profound ways. And um, to have Uranus in Leo means you're really, you're a brave soul to have conquered those experiences, to have undergone such negativity and such, in some cases, violence and hatred projected upon you. You know, all negativity is projected. And um, especially with our parents, you know, I, I'm really happy, I'm really lucky, I, I guess karmically, I guess you could say we worked through this in the past, that my parents have been relatively good, actually I would say overall very good, um, about dealing with this energy and, and trying to embrace the more flamboyant, eccentric side and, and less so the, the heartache, um, just mean side. And no one's perfect, we all make mistakes. Um, but it is really important to, to come to terms with this energy, I find. And to, um, especially since those, you know, you guys with Uranus and Leo very often have kids. And thus, are you put in the position of, of changing things, of potentially changing things from your childhood? You know, if you haven't done such a good job about that, when you're starting to realize that now, now is the time to change that. You're alive for a reason. Don't feel bad. Figure it out, you know. Um, connect with your kids and, and explain the hardships that you went through when you were a child. Try and get them to understand your perspective and also apologize. You know, I mean, I can only imagine, considering the chaos and the... the fear that was present in the world at that time and for the time before then, you know, during the war um, and then the Cold War, I can only imagine what horrific mindsets and, and psychological states of being I can only imagine what that was like and to grow up with a parent like that and my generation again, being one of the generations who were, were fathered and mothered by, by you guys um, it's really important for you guys to try and, to express that to us, to explain that to us. And I know that you might not have gotten an apology, in fact you probably didn't, from your parents, and especially your dad, who, you know, according to this energy, could, be, could have been rough. Um, but to break that cycle, to break that chain, and to move forward with your kids, and with all, you know, youngins, is definitely where this energy is meant to go. And it's been beautiful, I have to say. As we progress more and more day, you know, each day we're making progress into the Aquarian Age, into this next cosmic cycle um, for humanity and Earth. I see those with Uranus and Leo, not just, uh, you know, parents and, and parents of friends, but um, People who come to me for readings, it's, it's so, I'm so happy to get all sorts of people coming to me for readings. It's a very beautiful thing. And I've gotten a lot of people from Uranus and Leo, and they're just so incredibly heartfelt. And again, it's, it's one of the beautiful, it's one of the beautiful um, sides to this energy. You know, there's, there's some challenges with ego sometimes, there's some challenges with expressing your heart because you feel like, it's too vulnerable to do so. There's a lot of bottling up of anger and rage. But at the healthy side of the spectrum, it's an incredibly beautiful energy that just is radiant and shines. And I just love the eccentricity of, of my parents. And, uh, you know, it's funny because they have a lot of, of very sober, practical earth energies, especially Capricorn, all four of them. Fascinating. But, um,. That Leo, it, you know, it always shows its head. And um, it's been really great to see that ease with time and to see the heart chakra ease with time for these people, for, for my parents and for parents of friends and, and just this and all of you guys with this energy. It's been really great to see such progress being made. I know a lot of people from that generation uh, died submerging themselves in, in horrible feelings and drugs and alcohol and anything to escape the horrible feeling of rejection and pain that they gained from their childhood and uh, that was passed on to them unwittingly 
I mean, imagine people came home from World War II, from the Korean War, and there weren't social services, there weren't psychologists around to talk about these things. You know, alcoholic uh, alcoholism was was very much widespread, hence the culture of the fifties. You know, the cocktail martini culture, getting home from work to medicate, basically. Um, there was a lot of unspoken of issues because it wasn't in the culture to talk about them. And uh, thank God that we're moving past that. And thank God that, that you guys are moving past that. Because again, the, your creativity, your leadership, I mean, the, it's, it's a Leo placement. And all Leo energies, especially this one, I find, um, have such life to offer. It's the energy of the sun. And you guys, since Uranus is the planet of eccentricity, of, of innovation, of revolution, you guys embody that solar creativity, the Apollo energy, in so many interesting, random, bizarre, eccentric ways that is just so lovely. You have no idea how, how bright it makes the world. And if anything, I really hope and I encourage you to express that creativity and not be plagued by those, those fears and psychological tendencies that you were around when you were a vulnerable child and um, to, to express yourself because you have so much energy again Leo energy is very powerful it's the power of the Sun for God's sakes I mean the Sun is so magnificently huge and I mean everything in the solar system revolves around it even the second uh, biggest oh, well naturally um, Jupiter, which is so big, is still nothing. It's a nothing in comparison to the sun. And so you guys have this energy in a very special way. And again, considering this is the Aquarian age, and this, it's just getting more and more each day. First of all, kudos that you're still alive. You Seriously, that was a challenging energy to live through, and you've cleaned up so much karma. And just fucking good job. Because that, God, that was, that was a hell of a lot of karma to clean up. And, um, yeah, to, to be alive with this energy in this day and, and age, it, it, I swear, it seems those of this energy is just getting younger with each year. And it's a beautiful, beautiful fucking thing. Because in the past, there's been a lot of anger, a lot of rage, a lot of pain. And it's not just, you know, it's been, I've seen it in, in everyone with this, uh, who I grew up with, with this energy, with Uranus and Leo, and it's understandable. It's not, we should never judge people, ever, really, for, for who they are, but especially, least of all, we should never judge people, um, we should never judge people for, for their energies, and think, oh, I'm more advanced, because I have Uranus and Aquarius, instead of Uranus and Leo, where it's in detriment. No. Uranus and Leo has incredible gifts that are just now beginning to open up. And the world needs that. The world needs that leadership. It needs that creativity. It needs that eccentricity. Like I was saying, it needs... The beautiful thing is you guys are now at the age or a little bit older than the age than your parents were when they were raising you. And you know how horrible it was to have such a strict... And again, this is a generalization. Not every parent, of course, is going to be like this, but it... it Let's face it, World War Two. I mean, it's called a world war for a reason. It's not like you can really escape it. You know, even in other parts of the world, like uh, South America, for example, they, there's still sides going on and and allies and, and Axis power involvement. Everyone was impacted, you know, um, in the industrialized world, and and I wouldn't be surprised if if beyond, you know, into Central Asia and. and knows where else, Africa, um, yeah, so you guys have this opportunity in this current day and age to, to change all of those molds, those horrible, horrible molds of what it means to be an older person, a mature person, your, your vibrant, childlike, beautiful enthusiasm is one of your greatest gifts, and again, it's just opening up. And I am so excited, so excited to see that open up more and more. Not just because, of course, it's going to make the world an all the more brighter place. But it's going to really heal your hearts. And when you heal your own heart, you're able to heal other people's hearts. 
and god damn you guys are are the ultimate heart healers really because you've experienced out of all the other Uranian energies you've experienced some of the harshest heart energies you've experienced some harsh fucking emotions and you know all that pain can be transmuted can be sublimated to love and that is all of our greatest gifts but you guys shine love more radiantly than any other generation could and I think that's because you've been through so much there's a there's a, a saying that I find fits really well here when you've been through hell you tend to appreciate heaven and you guys have, are just beginning in some ways in so many ways to appreciate heaven and again you're making the world all the brighter as you do so so please, for your sake and for everyone else's, heal your heart, forgive. You don't have to forget, but in fact, don't forget. We're not meant to, but forgive. Express yourself. Lead. You're just beginning to lead in this world. Don't buy all the ageist bullshit of, you know, leaders have to be young or this or that. Oh, fuck that. It's all about life experience and wisdom. And you guys have both of those in spades. So embrace it. Embrace it and change this world so that the harshness that you experienced growing up never has to be experienced again. And in fact, that harshness can be sublimated into radiant sunlight and love. Infinite love to you, my dear friend. Namaste.